Hey guys, Proper English here. Ever since I saw that signal strength memory cell, I've been thinking about ways I could use it to build some awesome memory. And so what I've got here is RAM that can store 16 different signal strengths. So this is pretty cool. It's a 4x4 tileable cell, and it's quite fast. I'm not sure what the delay is right now, and I'm not too concerned because I'm sure that the comparators still have some work to go into them, so we'll figure that out later. But for now, let's check this out. All right, so let's start off with a quick demonstration of this individual cell over here. We'll enter a nine up top. We can save it with this lever over here. And now when I wanna output the nine, I read it. And we get a nine, beautiful. So let's leave the read on. We'll turn this nine off. And now let's save a four. Okay, and what this is going to allow us to do is see how quickly the output can change. So when I flip the lever, there we go. We've got a four. And so, like I said before, this is four by four tileable. So let's take a look at this array that I've got over here. All right, so let's try entering a six over here and a 14 over here. We'll save that to this first row. There we go. Now let's turn these guys off. And now we'll save a 1 over here and a 5 over here. And we'll save that to this row. And so we'll turn our inputs off and we can take a look at our data. So first we'll read this one. And so we've got our 6 and we've got our 14. And now when we read the other row, We've got our five and we've got our one. So this works great, it's nice and compact. We're storing a lot of data in a small space because each of these is worth four bits of binary. So what this is, is hexadecimal. I'm not labeling it as such and at some point I'm going to do a tutorial on it. So we'll worry about that later. But trust me when I say we're storing a lot of data in these cells. And so let's take a look at how they work. I've broken down the logic for the RAM cells so we can see what's going on a bit easier. We'll come down here and enter a 3. Okay, so this is our data input. But right now, we're not getting any data going into the memory cell because we've got a torch here and we're subtracting 15 from 3, so we get an output of 0. Right here, we've got a comparator and subtractor loop. That's the memory cell that saves the data. Okay, so when we want data to enter the memory cell, when we're saving something, we flip this lever and two things happen. First, a full signal of 15 goes into this subtractor and we subtract 15 from whatever was in the memory cell before. That clears out the memory cell so we can get new data coming in. Then we've also got this torch over here and that turns off. This allows our new data to come into the memory cell. When I turn this lever off, again, two things happen. This turns off, so we're no longer subtracting 15, okay? And that turns off before this torch turns on. That allows the data to stay in the memory cell. Then we turn this one on, and that subtracts 15 from any new data that's coming in so that it doesn't mess up our memory. And now, when we want to read it, we need to flip this lever over here. And so what this is doing is it's subtracting 15 from the data in the memory cell. That's why we've got this subtractor here. That allows us to control when we get an output. And when I flip this lever, we see we get an output of three. And that is how this thing works. So hopefully this gave you an idea of how to use memory and signal strength and maybe how to use comparators and subtractors a little bit better. Now I have to say, as happy as I am with this new memory, I'm not sure whether or not it'll beat out any memory we already have. Because remember, to save data in this memory cell, you first need to take it from binary and encode it into hexadecimal. And then to read that data, you need to decode it from hexadecimal into binary. So it may or may not be worth using, but it's still pretty cool. And I think it's a good example of how you can use comparators and subtractors. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.